Okay, everyone. So this week we will be talking about medieval art. So this is the time period between the fall of the Roman Empire in what is the was the western side of the Roman Empire, so in Europe, and the beginning of the Renaissance. So we have this time period between like the mid 400s to the late 1400, middle of the 1400s that we consider the Middle Ages, the Medieval period, the Dark Ages. All of those are this time period. And it was named that because historians, when they were looking at this time period, looked at it at first as being very backward because we go from all of these technological and societal advancements in the Romans into a period of a few hundred years where there's absolute chaos in Europe because there's no central government anymore. The Romans had had everything organized. They disappeared. So you have all of these different kingdoms that start to fight one another. By the time we're towards the end of the Middle Ages, we have the religion, the Catholic religion has come, it has spread across Europe, and it has really unified Europe once again, and then we move into the Renaissance. So this time period of like chaos and all this battling until it becomes unified again was not a pleasant time to live in. We had the Black Plague, we had all these other horrible things that were going on, wars, and it was just really not a pleasant time to be living in. So I do have a kind of funny little video up for you in Blackboard you should watch um, about why you wouldn't want to live then um, because it was so difficult. But during this time period, now when we go back and we look at it, we see that, in fact, there were some really amazing things that happened, including some really amazing art. So one of the things that happened is that writing at the very beginning, very few people knew how to write. In fact, it was only a few scribes that were copying out biblical texts that knew how to read and write. Even the kings didn't know how to read and write. And there was so much chaos in Europe that at one point, the scribes, the monks, they retreat up into Ireland and it was the only place in all of Europe that writing was really taking place. And this is why we have things like this that I'm showing you, the Book of Kells. So this is located in Dub Dublin, in Trinity College uh, in Ireland. And this is a magnificent book that was hand painted, handwritten, on vellum, which again is uh, animal skin. And we're looking at circa 800. So you can really see how intricately detailed this is. And the one thing that's very fascinating about Ireland and the artwork that's coming from that area and then up into Scandinavia, where we have the Vikings and the Celts. They were both pagan. They both, you know, where they were polytheistic worshiping many gods and then they end up finally getting to be converted to be catholic but they they hold on to some of their imagery from their pagan religion so when we look at the artwork from this area of europe um, from this early time period we have things like these celtic knots that are across over from the pagan religion. It was believed that Celtic knots, when you looked at them, if you were a demon or a witch, you would get enticed to go into them, but then you would be stuck in them and you couldn't get out of them. So they were a way of helping to ward off evil. So things like that, I think are really interesting how they get absorbed into these various religions. And this is so intricate, um, but if you look very closely, there are some animals in this. There's some human figures in this. Um, and it is really a, quite a beautiful piece of art. And there's hundreds of pages of this within this one book. 
we'll move on from there. And what I'm showing you is uh, Charlemagne's reign here of what he controlled. Here we have all of up here is what Charlemagne controlled. So in 814, we finally will get to Charlemagne and we see that he is one of the people that really starts to unify Europe back together. Okay. We also have the idea of this is the uh, Europe around 1100. We have the beginning of what becomes the Crusades with the pilgrims. So a pilgrimage is just a holy journey. That's why the people who came first to what become the what becomes the United States, they were pilgrims. They were going on a holy journey. So we have up in the area of St. Denis was one of the main places that this started in what we'll look at next week, the Gothic time period. And they literally walked by foot all the way over here to this tip. Uh, Santiago in Spain to see this cathedral. So once Charlemagne has united much of Europe together, we begin to see these kinds of things because it really has settled down by the 1100s and it's fairly safe to travel through Europe. So we'll come back to this. I want to first look at the British Isles and Scandinavia. And I have some maps up in Blackboard for you in case you're not exactly sure what part of Europe I'm talking about. So as I said, this, this part would be considered where the Vikings were living. And the Vikings do eventually get converted to be Catholic. But we have these early uh, clasps and different things uh, such as this that we have found. So here we have this amazing um, class, but it would have held like a uh, cloak together. And what we have here are again, these, these knots, they're Celtic knots or they're Vikings, the same thing. They're seen in both uh, religions. And then we have these animals. You see the head of the animal here where it kind of goes back on itself. And then we also have up in this area, it's a little hard to see, but we have wild boars. So here's a head of a boar and the body and the leg of one of the boars and then facing the other direction again, the head of the boar, the body, the leg. And boars were um, known to be very ferocious animals. They still are. You can still come across them in parts of Europe, like say for example, like Northern Italy. And you have to be very careful if you find one of these in the woods because they can kill you. Even though they're not that big of an animal, they're so ferocious they can kill you. So the reason why the boar is there, of course, then, is because it's very brave, it's very ferocious. So it was to symbolize that on the person that was wearing this. That he was, he or she was like this. So the next thing I show you is uh, the Gospel of Matthew and... Again, this is coming from this very interesting mixture of these uh, pagan and Catholic uh, religions when we get into the sextons here. And this is in the second half of the seventh century. So we have the uh, Celtic knots again here, and then we have St. Matthew. And notice how flat he is and how his feet are turned to one side. The feet are way too tiny. We don't see his arms. His, I guess his hair has kind of been faded over time. Um, but then he has this kind of abstract, you know, geometric design that's making up his cloak. Remember about iconoclasm. Remember how we're looking at the Byzantine where things are getting really flattened out. Same thing here. So people are deliberately flattening things out, exaggerating things, making things look strange, because if they made it too close to reality, they would be said to, you know, be making something that was blasphemous, blasphemous going against God. So we don't want to have things copied so they look realistic. So the same thing with the Byzantine art in this art that we're looking at this week, we really are not going to see any sculpture. It's going to be uh, artwork like this, where it's illuminating manuscripts, paintings, architecture. We'll have to wait really until we get into the Renaissance to see sculpture again. 
so Scandinavia. So, and as I said, this is really up in Scandinavia is where the Vikings are living. So this is Denmark in that area, sixth century. And this is really an amazing brooch where we have this um, kind of filigree. It's not even really done anymore, but you see this very intricate kind of metal work. You have animals down here. Here's the head of the animal and the legs and the backside of the animal here. Here you have, it's like a dragon's head with the open mouth on this side and then everything is symmetrical. So the same on this side. And the more you look, the more of these animals and things that you'll see that are coming out of this pagan belief and mixing with the Catholic belief. So here we have in Norway, what's called a stave church. And this is the oldest one in Norway that we have still in really intact. So this is from circa 1125 to 1150. It's a wood, completely made out of wood. And one thing you'll notice about this in relationship to other churches you might have seen around you is how pointed the roof of this building is like this. Well, Norway. It snows a lot in Norway. They have parts of the year where they don't really have much sunlight. They're extremely north. So the roofs are made like this, so the snow will fall off of them. And because when you have snow that's sitting on a roof for a long period of time, it gets very, very heavy. But notice also we have these, okay, here's a cross, right? And here's another cross, but then we have these animals. We have the, the depiction of animals. So once again, we have this uh, Viking, in this case, Norway's Viking, but we'll have Viking or Celtic or something like that added into the artwork. Now, when we look at it from the side, we really can see the relationship to the Vikings because it really looks as though they've taken a ship and they've turned it upside down to make the ceiling. And we know the Vikings were really good shipbuilders. They were raiders. They were the first Europeans to come to the United States way before Christopher Columbus, hundreds of years before him. They went all the way into the Middle East. They, they were far and wide. And why? Because they were really good shipbuilders. They were also very, very ferocious and fierce in their fighting. They believed if they died in battle, they went straight to their idea of heaven, Valhalla, and it was the most honorable way to die. So they actually wanted to die in battle. So they were known as very fierce warriors. Okay, so this would bring us to the Carolingian period, and I'm going to stop here and make another video for that one.